I'm a product that's been put out there to enjoy. I enjoy being consumed. The sugar dating scene in the UK is exploding. This is big. I wake up, eat, sleep and breathe men for money. Millions of older, wealthy men and younger, attractive women are reaping the rewards of transactional relationships. What the girl has is the beauty, but there's so many beautiful girls, then there's rich guys. We explore the lives of sugar babies, young women swapping female companionship and intimacy for thousands of pounds. This is a gift from one of my sugar daddies. It's like £16,000. And the sugar daddies, rich older men splashing the cash to pay for relationships with women 30 years younger. Sugar dating makes sense when you need companionship but not a real relationship. In a world where everybody is getting anything and everything they want. If I want to dull myself up and I want to be a product, I want to sell myself to men anyway, as long as they've got the money to pay for it, that's on them. But can it ever be enough? Once you're getting paid for sex, you get treated like you're being paid for sex. In the world of sugar dating, money talks. And with some young women being offered the chance to earn up to £20,000 a month, to spend time with rich, older men, millions are trying to find their perfect sugar daddy. 25-year-old Mimi from Slovakia first came across the sugar industry on a trip to the States. When I was 19 and I had moved to New York, I met some people there. Um, I met their sugar daddy. That was the first time I've ever heard about it. There was this kind of vision of easy money that was quite appealing to me and I just kind of wanted to see what I could do with it. When Mimi left her mum and dad to study in London five years ago, rather than date boys her own age, she preferred to date older men and has earned thousands of pounds from numerous sugar daddies ever since. I don't really have a specific number of dates I've been on over the course of five years. I'm guessing it could be around 50, possibly more. It's kind of just a blur. In the beginning, the dates were quite a nerve-wracking experience just because you're meeting a stranger. But eventually, I realized with each date I went on, the outcome was always positive. They always liked me. They always wanted to see me again. Eventually, I really enjoyed the dates. Her wealthiest sugar daddy was a 70-year-old businessman who paid all her tuition and rent for her first two years at university. This was kind of the guys I would go for. I don't really know why, but my first relationship was with an older man who was not a sugar daddy. Mimi has always struggled to make friends with people of her own age. She's never had a boyfriend. So for her, the dates were about more than just making money. It was just a way for me to not be lonely all the time because I was very lonely. I was here alone. I had no friends. I just did not have a, any kind of support group. Despite this, for years, Mimi could never see any of the relationships developing into something more serious. Because a lot of these relationships are based on an exchange of certain things. You can never be sure what the actual motivations are. I could never know whether the guy actually likes me or whether he likes me just because I'm pretty and I, I look good next to him. Um, just as well, the guy couldn't know that whether I, I was with him because of the money or because I actually liked him. Mimi currently has two sugar daddies that she has ongoing financial agreements with. As of right now, I get kind of like a basic income from my friend. I also get money from Miguel, who basically takes care of my rent and everything that um, that's extra. Mimi met 52-year-old Mexican sugar daddy Miguel three years ago on a popular sugar site. When I first met Mimi, it was quite interesting. I mean, we met first uh, online, of course. Miguel's relationship with his wife ended 10 years ago, but they decided to stay living together to raise their two children. This meant that conventional dating didn't work for him, but sugar dating did. Basically, it has opened uh, new possibilities. Uh, it's something I was not really looking for, just happened to be because of who she is and because of how we connected. After initially messaging each other for three weeks, Mimi and Miguel first met in person two years ago when Mimi was back home in Slovakia and Miguel was going there for work. Because Miguel lives in Zurich and I live in London, 
We see each other twice a month, usually for around four to five days each time. So pretty much majority of the month we are apart. Hey, baby. Baby. You look so good. Thank you. We try to see each other as much as possible. So uh, apart from meeting either in Zurich or in London, we also do a, a lot of trips. Good. I'm always texting her in the mornings. I'm always texting her in the evenings. We we'll try to call sometime in the morning and then sometime in the afternoon. Long distance is definitely harder. Don't really enjoy the time when we are apart. I think it's harder for me than it is for him. Despite being together for two years, their relationship continues to be based on a financial arrangement. Maybe the garter belts. The first few times we met, there was no payment. Uh, we would just go out, kind of like regular dating, and then uh, he would invite me to Zurich. So I, I came a few times to Zurich, which obviously would always take care of all the financial side of things. And then eventually he would start paying me, but it was always for things I needed, such as my rent. So as far as finances, he takes care of most stuff. You have something like this? Actually. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually wearing something like this right now. Mm. Before Mimi, Miguel had dated numerous younger women, but had never been looking for love. When you meet someone as you are dating side, you are never really expecting a, a relationship. You are never expecting a, a girlfriend to, to just come out of there. Both Miguel and Mimi are open about their other sugar relationships, past and present. Miguel is not really into lingerie very much in that sense, but they, the guys I knew, they would buy something for me specifically to wear for them. You know, in the beginning, I was like young and stupid, so I was like, yay, great, I have free underwear. <laughs> it was nice underwear too, it was quite expensive. Once you're getting paid for sex, it, you get treated like you're being paid for sex. And I never wanted to be treated like that. It's 64 pounds. Okay. But the politics of transactional sugar relationships can be difficult to navigate. Usually the sugar daddies are the ones that have the money. I pay in cash, okay. I think they always have more of a power. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. What the girl has is the beauty, but there's so many beautiful girls on there, and there's more of them than there is of rich guys. Thank you so much. Nice nice pleasure. You. Bye. Thanks. One such girl is 22-year-old table dancer Kiki. She moved from Darlington to London five years ago to earn easy money from rich, older men who wanted to spend time with her. I met a guy at the strip club and he actually asked me to come to a, um, a launch event for a skincare range that he was doing. He works in a surgery in Harley Street. And I felt like he was kind of making it as if I was his girlfriend, you know, showing me off that kind of thing. And that was my first kind of experience of being a sugar baby because I did get paid for that event. Uh, I wasn't expecting to, but I did. And then after that, um, I kept going out and seeing him. And yeah, it kind of just spiraled from there. In these transactional relationships, Kiki expects the sugar daddies to lavish her with gifts and in return, they get her time and attention. All these bags have pretty much been bought by sugar daddies. I think typically sugar daddies like to buy girls more designer, um, expensive, luxurious items so that they look more appealing when they're out with them. Sometimes they'll ask you, like, you know, what kind of things you want, or you can have a wish list, so guys just kind of know what to buy you and what you're after and stuff. This is definitely my favourite gift from one of my sugar daddies. But it was like £16,000, I think. But it's not always just luxury gifts that change hands. Every sugar daddy's different. Some guys will do the PPM, which is pay per me. Um, some guys will give you an allowance, and some guys will just treat you accordingly. Some sugar daddies know exactly what they want. They will already message you with, I want to see you three or four times a week. We will go for dinner, depending on what the arrangement entails. Those are the better kind of ones. It's less effort, a lot less effort, when they know what they want. But there's no chance of any romantic or sexual involvement with the men she meets. Growing up with her mother and brother in the northeast, Kiki always knew that she wasn't attracted to men. I think I was actually born gay, so, um, yeah, I've always liked girls from a really young age. I was just obsessed with, like, my mum's friends' boobs and stuff. When I was really young, it was so embarrassing. Um, but, yeah, she'd always known I was gay, I think, uh, so when I told her, it wasn't a surprise. 
Despite preferring women, Kiki's happy earning by offering companionship to rich men as it brings in up to 15 to 20k a month. Though it does mean she's putting her own love life on hold for now. I'm not looking for love. I tend to think it fucks everything up. At the end of the day, this is my job and I'm out here making money. That's what I do it for. I don't get anything out of this. I'll make myself as uncomfortable as possible if I'm going to get my money at the end of the day. It's estimated over half a million British men and women signed up to sugar dating in the last year alone. On the south coast is one such player on the sugar scene. 21-year-old Madison, who is still living at home with her mum, yet manages her sugar daddy relationships from her own bedroom. I'm a product that's been put out there to enjoy. It's not to say I'm not a person, I still have opinions, I still have feelings, and I'll be the first to make it known when I feel something or when I want something. But, yeah, I'm a product, I enjoy being consumed. Since leaving school at 16, Madison struggled to hold on to a normal 9-to-5 job. At 18, she was unemployed and discovered the financial benefits of selling explicit content of herself online to wealthy and generous older men. For me personally, with um, my autism and my ADHD, when I was working in my warehouse job, uh, it was very stressful. I found myself cracking under a lot of the pressure where I was actually losing my hair from alopecia, from stress. I found yeah. that I wasn't able to be a better version of myself. Yeah, why I like keeping things online. It's my bubble where I can perform my full potential from my comfort. Just like Kiki, Madison's been working as a sugar baby for three years. She's just never met her daddies in person. My daily routine as a sugar baby, I would get up, go make a coffee, let my dog out, and then start replying to people. I am replying to Golden. He is one of my sugar daddies. And I'm just going to find out how his day is going. We have been speaking quite seriously for about a year now because of his interest in feet and I'm kind of obsessed with shoes and crazy things. So we started talking about shoes and it just kind of went from there. And then we were like, oh, so he kind of called himself my daddy one day. And I was like, yeah, so I like that. That sounds good to me. The things that we discuss really, <laughs> just how are you, how's work, nerdy things, films, games. I think people think things are a lot less wholesome than they are and it's really not the case. Golden is around 50 years old and they speak every day but he isn't the only sugar daddy in her life. I also speak to a gentleman, let's call him Marty. He pays for pretty much all of my beauty regime. I've had a couple times even in the past where I've had like a tough month and I haven't been able to meet Ren and he's helped me out, which is incredible. And then I speak to another gentleman who, he sends me care packages every month full of like sweets and stuff. It's the sweetest thing in the world. Having found a job that she enjoys with the freedom she needs, Madison's keen to make it work long term. Obviously, you do have to keep them sweet because you always want to stay favourable to them because you want to keep them in your life. I'm not a crazy person that like, doesn't care about their health and just wants their money, you know? I think that would just be so... I couldn't do that personally. I've never thought about, like, feeling odd about it or feeling weird about it. It's, it is work for me, despite having a personal investment in wanting to know how they are. Nothing in this line of work is easy. The, invest the time that you have to put in to actually gaining the trust of these men that's not easy. You end up with a lot of girls getting in deeper than I think that they realise and taking on more than they think that they can cope with. And then they're two months in and it's like, oh shit, I can't do this. In exchange for cash, Madison not only offers her sugar daddy's companionship online, she also creates bespoke sexual content. So alongside my sugar daddies, I make regular content and upload it. It's quite explicit. It's a lot of solo content, photos, higher quality videos people can pay for extra, but all of a very adult nature. So this will be my to-do list today. I have to do a video and a photo set for Marty. For Golden, I'm going to be doing a foot video and a photo set also to accompany that. A fetish photo shoot is all in a day's work for Madison in her life as a sugar baby. Golden in particular has an interest in feet, so I will be doing some foot orientated work for him. So I'll do something with a foot cream. I'll be doing some photos. Pokemon my animal. I enjoy filming myself. That's why I do it. I wouldn't still be doing it after three years if I didn't enjoy putting myself out there and filming myself in this manner. Yes, yeah, so I film really up close. Yes. Three, two, one. 
I love it. I think maybe that's part of why I love what I do is because maybe the voyeuristic tendencies, maybe I'm a little bit of a pervert in my own head. If I want to doll myself up, if I want to be a product, I want to sell myself to men in any way, then as long as they've got money to pay for it, that's on them. So it's gone. While Madison is loving the sugar life, experienced sugar baby Mimi is thinking about simplifying hers. The plates, right? Yeah, the balls are in the bottom. The Although they've been seeing each other for two years, Mimi's financial arrangement with Miguel is not her only one. Having met Miguel, I eventually would stop seeing everyone else. And honestly, the thing is I was never attached to anyone else. None of the relationships I've had before came even close to what I have with Miguel. I feel pampered, you know. Aww. It's, um... She does things for me that nobody has ever done. You do everything. I do Aspire, everything. Like, for now, you do. No. I can get someone to iron my shirts if I pay. But that's not what you do for me. I wouldn't call it sugar relationships anymore because I think it kind of carries a negative connotation. Um, and I'm not really, I'm over, I'm over the whole sugar lifestyle. Like, honestly, I've kind of grown to dislike it. Despite this, Mimi still has a second sugar daddy in her life who continues to give her money for her time and attention. It sounds really bad on paper, but it's just a very, it's just two people that like each other as friends and it's kind of like a supportive friendship. That's the thing, like once somebody gives you money just like that, it's whatever you say, it's perceived in a certain way and it just raises questions. So, off to bed. Good. <laughs> I've kind of have a very clear outline of this relationship that I have on the side. I'm going to see him maybe two more times before I move away and that's it. There's people's emotions involved, whether it's Miguel or him. When you look at, at relationships, I, I rather take the, the open approach. <laughs> I know that Mimi has these other people that she's uh, being with, if you don't give your partner the freedom to be who they are, to be with whom they choose to be, they're just going to be behind you. The thing is, the history has shown that you're not, because every time I would sleep with someone else, which only happened like once, and once you thought I was, but I wasn't, you had a blackout, you had to get drunk and drown your sorrows mm -hmm. and talk like, um, tell your friends about it, like confide in someone. So it doesn't work in practice, does it? But it's definitely more elastic. The beginning we started off being quite curious. And then as in, we explored threesomes, mm. uh, finding other couples, the swingers club. Mm. And then I think as soon as it became quite a serious relationship, we got, at least, I mean, yeah, I think we both got very sensitive about who the other person was seeing mm -hmm. or what the other person was doing with someone else. For me, anyway, it's like, this is like the most real relationship I've ever had. Are you happy right now? Yes, I'm happy right now. <laughs> 22-year-old stripper Kiki has four long-term sugar daddies, but is on the hunt for more. I'm Kiki, nice to meet you. Right, While nice Kiki you. puts her love life on hold, she wants to make as much money as she can by attracting the wealthiest sugar daddies. So she's lined up a glamour photo shoot. So I'm actually here to like build up my portfolio again. Um, obviously, this uh, I am a sugar baby, and the kind of photos that I'm taking are to like you know lure these men in. <laughs> but... Paying for professional shots is an important investment for Kiki to catapult her ahead of the competition. These pictures for me will just separate me from some other girls. They put me in a little bit of a different league. There is a difference between the girls that take pictures in the bedroom and the girls that go out there and actually put themselves out there and get these pictures done. It just puts you in a completely different market altogether. As well as attracting new clients, Kiki has to keep the regulars coming back. 
This means working hard to convince them she's as invested in them as they are in her. My cute Kiki. I don't know. I'm really a mess. Got a flu. Have to travel. OK, that's Daddy number three Let me down. <laughs> Apparently he's ill. Oh, that's OK, babe. I hope you get better soon. Please let me know when you are so we can go out. I miss you. I think of it as a job. It's kind of like acting to me. The precarious nature of the sugar relationships means she has to make sure her appeal is as broad as possible. This look is more of like an innocent kind of look. Some guys have, you know, a little kink for the younger girls, so they want you to look more pure and innocent. And that's what this look is about, so I'm kind of catering to both of their needs with doing the bondage and then doing this. Look back at me. Nice. <laughs> This car, there's people. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is the police station right here. Police. When you look put together, that your life is put together, and that's what they're hoping for. They're hoping for someone who hasn't got any baggage or issues. They think, obviously, if you're out there and all this designer stuff and your life is all perfect, blah, 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 that they're going to get this perfect experience with you. Yeah, there you go. But the pressure to maintain that image of perfection comes at an even higher yeah. price than a photo yeah. shoot. Since I've started working in this industry, I've already had some cosmetic procedures, just like my lips. I recently obviously had a boob job. That was for the kind of work that I do. Lovely. I think it's awful that we all have this pressure to look a certain way, but the thing is, it's like a lot of competition to keep up with nowadays. Um, and basically, if you don't get it, there's someone that has it. Really arch, nice. There's guys that like the plastic surgery look. There's guys that like the, the fake look. Lovely. Yeah, cool. So it's definitely, definitely got me more money because there's more of an audience. It's more attractive to certain people. You're Thank very you. Welcome. It was nice You're to meet welcome. you. With her new photos uploaded live onto a Sugar Daddy website, Kiki's keen to see if they've had the desired effect. So I've just got a message back from one of my Sugar Daddies and I actually like the look of this one. He's just given me his number, so he's probably not fake. I'm going to take that. So, yeah, we've arranged a date for Saturday night. And he has a Ferrari. And everyone likes a Ferrari, right? For the sugar baby, image may be everything, but when it comes to what they're looking for in a sugar daddy, it's all about the money. I'm just replying to a message who um, someone says, I'm John and I'm looking for a new princess, is that you? Um, generally, when they say that they're looking for a new princess, um, they kind of want to spoil, spoil you with gifts and stuff, so this is probably a good one. He's older and his net worth, 30 million net worth. So these are the good ones. If this guy is real, he will be good. Kiki has no problem promoting sex to sell herself to these men, even though she would never have an intimate relationship with them. There's lots of men on the website looking for sex. Most of them will find it as well, because a lot of the girls actually sign up um, willing to do that. My images are quite sexually suggestive, um, provocative. Maybe some people might find them misleading. The pictures are just to showcase, for me, my best features. It kind of, like, widens my um, audience. I'm definitely in it for the money and also the freedom of just being able to do whatever I want. As many as half a million UK students are registered as sugar babies, it's seen as a way to pay for expensive tuition. Mimi has been doing just that since she met Miguel two years ago. They try to keep the fact that they met through sugar dating under wraps, but as their relationship becomes more serious and exclusive, they're ready to start telling close friends. I'm going to have a call with Nuno. He's a good friend of mine. It's an interesting next step because he doesn't know about uh, about this relationship. Hey, Nuno, what's up? Hey, Miguel. It'll be interesting to also understand and, and see how he reacts. I'm in London. I, I'm uh, visiting Mimi. It's It's good. Can you tell me how you met her? And basically, we met over the internet on a, on a, on a, you know, this dating pages. A lot of people uh, there, they are looking for someone like a sugar daddy, eh? yeah. That's what they tell me. How old is she? Uh, you're going to kill me, Nuno. She's 25. <laughs> a little bit young for you, but... The thing is, you know, we live in a different world now. It's um, liberating, in a way. She likes... Um, older people than younger people. Then I have to say, you are a lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I wish you all, all the best. And you look very happy. Yeah, I can Thank see you. a smile on your Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy.
Bye, yeah. Nuno. It was good to uh, talk to Nuno. Um, he's actually a good friend. Quite happy to see that, uh, that I was quite happy, so it's, uh, it's a good thing. I think. Mimi's also hoping to come clean about the complex sugar life she's been leading, much of which she's tried to keep from her friends. I'm going out with uh, my old friend, a girl this time. I think she knows about my sugar lifestyle and she met Miguel and I tried to keep it secret for at least a year. I think anyone looking at us would wonder why am I with someone like that just because of the age gap. Mimi and Beth have known each other since they were 15 when they met at high school in Slovakia. How are you? Um, also good. I'm actually really busy. And Miguel is here. Okay, I have to say, the first time you told me about Miguel, or well, you, um, you introduced us, yeah. and sh and you told me he was your friend. Mm -hmm. I did not believe you. <laughs> Despite sharing a flat with Beth, Mimi did her best to downplay her life as a sugar baby. You mentioned there were other people, but you never wanted to give me any details. I mean, I'm not really proud of it. I don't think anyone would think that this is a way to be forever, you know? but I'm not ashamed for finding a way to make my life easier. Would you ever try the sugar relationship type things? I, I don't judge people who do it. I, I'm just, I think I don't have the confidence. <laughs> um, do you think you will stop seeing other, other older men and your relationship with Miguel will become, be, become an exclusive relationship? I mean, for now we are because First of all, I don't have time or need to see anyone else. I think, honestly, what I really want right now is just, I just want to find that person who is, who I can, like, just stick with, you know, because it takes so much pressure off of you. Our relationships are supposed to work in a slightly different way. How? I don't know, like, you, I mean, based on love, no, I, I, it is about love. But I mean, you, what, what you just described doesn't sound like love. But of course, like, there's so much irrational about this relationship that there has to be love involved because otherwise... No, I mean, I do, I do like, believe that, obviously, I do believe that there are yeah. feelings. But it's just mm -hmm. the way you, you talk about the relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really good. I'm going to stick with it. That's my rationale. And if that's love, then I guess it is, you know? I don't see anything wrong about what you're doing as long as you're happy. That's so sweet. So. Yeah, I agree. For sugar baby Kiki, having the right look is essential to making top money in the world of transactional relationships. At just 22, the pressure to look perfect means she's already had fillers in her lips and a breast enhancement. Yet despite not being sexually attracted to the men she dates for money, she's willing to go under the knife again to enhance the look that those men desire. I am so excited I'm going to get a consultation for a BBL. Hi! BBL is a Brazilian butt lift. So it's actually a fat transfer from one area of your body. You can use anything from upper arms, lower arms, uh, legs, any area of your body, and it puts it in your ass, <laughs> in your bum. <laughs> Put it in your bum. <laughs> so just take a seat. I'm going to come and sit opposite you. Kiki's meeting renowned Harley Street specialist, Dr Khan, to find out if her dream of the perfect body can come true. What are you looking to achieve? Um, just like an hourglass. I want, I want an improvement in, in your yeah. shape. Does it affect your confidence at all? A lot, so much. Um, with me being a dancer and stuff as well, people are always taking pictures of me at work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always getting them posted online. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I always constantly have to look like these pictures. So we'll have a look and we'll see what we see. And I'll, I'll have a look to see if I can also see what you're seeing as yeah. well. It's really hard these days, I think, because you've got to, like, keep up to date with all your looks and things like that and like these guys on these websites they can have any girl they want so you've got to have a look for the one with the whole package now tell me apart from the hip dips are you happy with the shape of the rest of your body no um i would like a little bit more volume in my actual bum mm -hmm. like and i want my like stomach I don't want it, my stomach to be thinner, but I want it to appear thinner so that obviously the bum will. Okay. 
Can I just uh-huh. examine you? All right. So here, there is very little of the fat that we would use for transfer on your stomach or on your waistline, okay? So this is your natural shape. And I think for you, you should be really thinking about not a fat transfer, but a body sculpting using probably fillers. I think for Kiki, physically, there isn't any way that she could have a Brazilian butt lift. She doesn't have enough fat, but also when we find that you know a patient comes in who's asking for a change in their body because somebody else is putting a demand on them to change, that's a real uh, red flag. It, it's a danger sign. Dr. Khan's assessment is a blow for Kiki. Thank you. Well, if you'd like to get dressed. There's a few reasons I want to change myself. One of them is the money aspect. Um, you get more money, more clients from uh, different kinds of guys, more higher class guys. Um, but also within myself, I want to feel better and just more self-confident. Just wanted a definite answer that I was not going to be able to get this surgery because it's something I really, really wanted. In Worthing, 21-year-old sugar baby Madison has created a living, selling companionship and intimacy to older men online. When she started her business from the family home three years ago, some of her loved ones had reservations. I'd rather go to work in the day, so I try to do the bulk of what I do in the day because I try to be respectful to the fact that obviously he doesn't like what I do and I don't really want to go put it in front of his face because it's obviously a bit awkward moaning daddy and <laughs> all that when your brother's in the bedroom next door. And Madison's 63-year-old mother took some time to adjust to her daughter's choice of work. She's come around a little bit through me talking to her about the fact that like my female friends are inspired by me, they look up to me. I would say that probably if she had a choice, it wouldn't happen. But she doesn't because she recognises at least that you know, now I'm an adult that can make my decision and I can do what I want to do if I want to do it. And as long as my bills are paid, my rent is paid, so what can she do? Nothing. But it's paying her rent which is causing Madison concern today. Though she is regulars, there are no contracts and any of her sugar daddies could pull the plug at any time. I get anxious waiting for responses, like especially responses about money. I don't know what it is. But like, even if I'm just like, oh, I want to get my nails done. For some reason, I'm always getting in my head, like waiting for that message to come through. Like, no, no, they're going to be like, you can't have it. No, I... <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I can't even just wait for a message. <laughs> oh. And that's the thing, I wait for so many, you'd think that I would learn to be more patient by now. Unlike Kiki and Mimi, Madison is yet to begin face-to-face -face meets. So she relies on the money coming in from her online relationships, where the potential earnings are lower. People are flaunting like a car to me or something on Snapchat, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy this. And then they just go dead silent on me for hours, and then the next day I'm like, oh, so you're still interested? Because obviously I get excited when I think I'm gonna make a 60 pound, 100 pound, maybe even a 200 pound sale. I get very excited, you know, that's money, that's food in my mouth, that's a new toy for my dog, it's a new outfit for work. Because it's like you're rubbing in my face something that you know I want. I don't know, but it just gets under my skin a bit. Like, well, the power is in their hands because they have the money. At the end of the day, they have the money that's paying your bills. There's no qualms with that. There's no debating that. It is what it is. Oh, wow. No, they're beautiful. For now, her anxious wait to hear from her sugar daddy and a much needed boost to her bank balance goes on. He is at work, so usually on his break, or if he gets a moment at his desk, I'll get a little bit moji of him dancing around and being happy, which is quite sweet. My work is a lot freer than theirs, so yeah, I do find myself kind of like, oh, reply, where are you? Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Millions of older men and younger women are enjoying transactional relationships in the UK. 21-year-old Madison has been selling her time, attention and images of her body online to wealthy older men for three years. Today she's doing a private photo shoot for one of her sugar daddies. And her regular collaborator is also her long-term boyfriend of six years who's asked to remain anonymous. He was a little bit apprehensive and he was a little bit like, oh, OK, this is a little bit odd. But I had a lot of fun for doing my first photo set. I don't know about you. I think we ended up 
having sex afterwards. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I think that's a fabulous thing when it's really done for us. Is I think it has actually uh, done wonders for even our sex life, really. He was patient with me and he understood that it was something that I wanted to do. And over time, obviously, he realised that it wasn't that big of a deal, I suppose. Yeah, it was a little bit weird at first, but you get used to it, don't you? I think that was really incredible of him, and now we have gotten where we are today, and we're three years along the line. Wait, are you standing up, or...? Um, I'm going to try and do a couple like that, although is, it, is that getting in...? Her partner does all the photography and video content for the many sites Madison maintains for her sugar daddy's viewing pleasure. The photography side, he enjoys. He loves his camera, he loves taking photos, so it kind of worked out quite well, I think. But how does he cope with the sexually explicit nature of Madison's work? Take it and let me see what it looks he like. He understands that it's not like a traditional relationship like I am with him. Obviously, you could say they are intimate relationships in the sense that I know these people intimately. I wouldn't say I know these people half as intimately as I know my partner. Not nearly. Sometimes he has to get hands-on with more than just the camera to help Madison persuade her sugar daddies to keep paying her money every month. In a lot of the stuff I make, when it is content that I need to make with a male, he is the male that is present there. The only thing is literally just remaining anonymous because it's just what he chooses. We have ways that we get around that in our videos with facial covers and stuff. Other people can view me, can pay to enjoy me, but there is no sharing me. He knows I am fully his. This is a very sexual outfit that a lot of people use for this. And it's why I choose to do what I do over women that go out and have physical relationships with these men, especially being in a relationship with someone that I am completely committed to. I do not wish to go out and have sexual relationships with other men. I am a businesswoman making content to put out there to make money. <laughs> Kiki's insisted on a meet-up with her best friend, Shaney. The results of her consultation have been playing on her mind and she's feeling even more pressure to look good. How did it go? It was really shit. Um, he basically <laughs> told me what I already knew, um, that I wasn't, like, that I don't have enough fat and I'm not allowed it. I feel sad for you. I'm so sorry. He was basically just saying that I really don't need it. Thank you for this, by the way. That's OK, you're welcome. I thought you would need it. I'm not feeling in competition with other girls and I'm yeah. constantly doubting myself, thinking, like, they're so much better than what I am and, like, they, they're more, like, attractive than what I am. So I want to be like that, but... Never. You're going to have to embrace what you've got, girl. Be pleasing of guys is a big, big aspect of my life, work, and every, every day, basically, but... What's more important to me right now is the way I feel about myself. I want to just fix my problem and then that's it. <laughs> Move on, get on with my life. I'm not going to be this desirable forever. <laughs> I don't know like what kind of men I'm going to find when I'm whatever age. It's not a forever job, it's not. When you get older, men get less interested. They want the new, younger version. With the pressure to be perfect taking its toll, there's been a development in Kiki's life that's bringing her sugar baby career into sharp focus. How cute is that? Make me sick. I want you to meet her, she's so nice. Yeah, I want to meet her. Kiki's met a woman and it's becoming serious. She makes me feel really good. I've never said this about anyone. Like, I've been in relationships with girls, uh, obviously, a long time. I've had sugar daddies for years as well. I, I haven't been looking for anything. Um, I've wanted to be single for fo quite a long time to focus on myself. That's what all this is about, the, the dating, the sugar baby in and getting this money. Like, it, it's about doing and being what you want to be and what you want to do. She kind of just came and <laughs> swept me off my feet. Like the men in her life, this new potential love interest, Kathy, is older. She's like <laughs> yeah. a sugar mama, but it's not. Like, she's not uh, keeping me. I'm not working for her. Maybe that's a different sign, the fact that you don't want anything from her, whereas usually that's all you do want from a relationship is what they can give you. Not a relationship, but, yeah, from another person. Yeah. Well, yeah. A situationship. Yes. <laughs> her feelings mean that Kiki is toying with a new future and maybe even finding love. If Kathy asked me tomorrow to give everything up for her and, like, just move in with her, get a normal job, I'll be gone like that. Because she gives me a feeling I've never felt before. It's more than money. Money doesn't make me happy like she does. But could she really afford to give up the easy money she earns from her older men? 
if you got with her and quit the sugar daddy in? What would you do for money? I don't know what I would do. This is big. This is like, this is my life. This is how I make my money. Yeah. This is my every day. I wake up, live, eat, sleep and breathe men for money. Yeah. And uh, that would be literally changing my life upside down completely for one person. A bit difficult because she is emotionally involved now. And that's not always leads to the greatest things, but you know, if it does, then hats off to them, I mean, if they want to try. And if it succeeds, then good for them. I, I found someone who makes me not want that uh, lavish lifestyle. I don't want to or need to jet off wherever I want. I just want to be with this person. I just, like, I think that's what life's about, is just finding that happiness. In London, Mimi and Miguel are looking to the future too. They've decided to move in together. It's a big commitment for them both, but for Mimi in particular, it means leaving the sugar world behind and finally breaking off the relationship with her other sugar daddy. I feel at this stage, the need to kind of close off all my old relationships or the people that I've, I have in my life and to just keep them kind of in the past kind of set on this new life. That's so nice. Yeah. What do you do when the paper finishes? Moving to Zurich uh, for me to live with Miguel means that we'll finally be like a proper couple. I think in my mind it's kind of like that. I'll finally have that, uh, that life that um, I've kind of wanted for a while now. This is um, rat bones that she sourced from a Ukrainian witch. Although she's giving up one sugar daddy, she'll continue to enjoy the benefits of an older, wealthier man as Miguel continues to help pay her way. I think maybe moving to Zurich is just like the next step in the relationship. Uh, <laughs> good. I disagree with that. <laughs> okay. I look forward to being with you being the last person I say good night to and being the first person I say good morning to. It's easy. Aww. That's sweet. Thank you, so thank you and thank you for your guys. patience. I think sometimes the best things that happen to you is, are not the ones you're looking for. It just happens. You just meet someone. Yay. And it's very nice. Very nice. And I, I think I'm, I'm extremely lucky that I met someone like Mimi. I think there's always going to be a doubt, just because that's life, you never know what's going to happen, but I think I have committed to this, and I'm very grateful that uh, what some people never find, I found so early on. And uh, um, I'm just really excited to finally move in with Miguel and start the life together. I'm used to earning fast, easy money and a lot of money. The sugar dating scene in the UK is exploding. A lot of my friends have sugar daddies, but they're not in love with their sugar daddy. Millions of older, wealthy men and younger, attractive women are reaping the rewards of transactional relationships. You got your teeth gone? Um, when are you paying for my tea? We explore the lives of sugar babies. Young women swapping female companionship and intimacy for thousands of pounds. This is a gift from one of my sugar daddies. It's like £16,000. And the sugar daddies, rich, older men splashing the cash to pay for relationships with women up to 30 years younger. Sugar dating makes sense when you need companionship, but not a real relationship. In a world where everybody is getting anything and everything they want... This person has been texting me asking what I'm into. He wants to see me because he thinks I'm really pretty. So how do I tempt you? But can it ever be enough? Before we came in, Robin kept saying, you know, I love diamonds and I want diamonds. 
You know, she wanted diamonds and uh, she's got them. Yeah. Twenty-five-year-old Jasmine lives in London and has been selling her time and affection to rich older men for five years. I started going into this sugar world, if you would call it, when I was back at uni. Being at uni, we all know that it's really hard, you need to pay your tuition. So I've heard some of my friends were talking about getting a sugar daddy and stuff like that. And it all sounded fun. So I've decided to see what's out there. Jasmine currently has five sugar daddies on the go, one of whom she's been seeing for four years. From these men, I give about 2,000 a month. I'm a very high maintenance. <laughs> With each of her sugar daddies paying her an allowance, she regularly earns more than 6,000 pounds a month. But even that isn't enough for Jasmine. She combines her work as a sugar baby with a regular job. I'm in a really high-end risk job. I can't sit here openly showing my face and talking about this. I've worked really hard on it. I I'm not looking to get fired. And Jasmine's approach to her sugar daddies is strictly business as well. When we first have our talk, I always like to negotiate first to see how much they willing to give me. And then we start talking about like the help that I need and stuff like that. Or he ends up telling me the amount that he's willing to give me. And then if I don't like it, they either would go up or that's it. The arrangement doesn't go any further. And just how much further the arrangement goes is entirely at Jasmine's discretion. People do say that we do receive money for intimacy, but if there is no chemistry, there won't be intimacy. There are some men that I don't have any intimacy with, but yet I still do get financial help. So it's not always about getting money for sex. The preconceptions people have about sugar dating is one of the main reasons she keeps this part of her life secret. Some of my close friends do know things, but my normal friends, my family, they don't need to know what I do. As long as I make them happy, that's all that matters to me. Despite keeping her sugar life under wraps, Jasmine actually prefers her transactional sugar relationships to traditional ones. I have had just normal relationships in the past and there was always something that the person is expecting from you. And to me, because I'm such a busy person, I don't have time to make every amend right. That's why this works for me because you don't need to be worrying about what the other person is feeling like. There is just so much headache. Not all sugar relationships are purely financial arrangements. I'll make sure the mushrooms win date. Some are genuine romantic relationships between an older man so and a younger woman. Maybe in tomatoes and some toast. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Chris Quinton lives in suburban West London. He's a former soap heartthrob who starred in Coronation Street during the 80s. I'll use all these mushrooms. These days, he splits his time between running a strip club and acting in one of Britain's most popular soap operas. Tomato and uh, mushroom omelet. Yeah, you make a good omelet, don't you? Chris hit the headlines when he got engaged to a young table dancer, Robin Delabere. I'm 63 next birthday, and Robin has just turned 22. So literally, it's a 41 year gap. Wow. <laughs> I don't feel 62. You know, physically or mentally, I still feel I'm in my 30s. Um, it's only when I look in the mirror and I go, oh my God, you've got, <laughs> actually a bit grey. <laughs> well, you know, um, so I, you know, I don't suddenly think, oh, you know, th th there's, there is an age difference. It's weird. We have loads of things in common because obviously people think it's weird because he's a lot older, but I love Elvis. I come from a family that loves like Elvis and stuff, and he said he loves it. 
Um, he loved just doing like normal things like going to nice cocktail bars and I said, oh, I love doing that. Don't you want to take your tea bag out? Yeah. I never know with you. Thank you very much. I've got the right cup. Look there. <laughs> Hubby. <laughs> Matching cups. <laughs> She's got wifey. I love these cups. They're a present, weren't they? An engagement present, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they're very confident in us. Yeah. That we'll go all the way. We're going to carry it on. <laughs> People who know Robin and I know that we are genuinely in love. Um, but people who don't know us and maybe have, you know, read about us in the paper may think because I'm an older man and Robin's young that it's a kind of older man, younger girl relationship. I've seen, obviously, a lot of my friends have sugar daddies and people always assumed Chris was my sugar daddy because he was older. These girls work and still earn their own money, but they're not in love with their sugar daddy. Whereas Robin's head over heels with hers. Chris is also a dab hand around the house and loves taking care of his young fiancé's every need. He's been very good recently. Yeah. <laughs> he brings me tea in the morning, does breakfast. She does take a time to get up, so maybe that's why I get up and do it and encourage her to wake up. <laughs> You're such a morning person, though, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> trying to think, when I was 21, you couldn't get me out of bed. I, I could not get out of bed. Uh, wouldn't even think about tidying up. Chris does the washing, the cleaning, the cooking, the ironing. But he loves to do all that. He loves to take pride in this home, so... I, I love looking after her, so, you know. But the quiet life at home with Robin is a far cry from the party scene Chris was used to in his days as a soap heartthrob. I started Corey at 21. So, you know, I was lucky, lucky enough to be well known through my 20s, which for any young guy is quite astonishing. I was looked upon as the first kind of like heartthrob of these soap operas. And plus it was through the 80s. It was a great time to be famous. We were living in the same level <clears throat> as those pop stars at that particular time. I was very lucky, you know, apart from my acting, I've been involved in nightclubs for 30 years. And in nightclubs, young people. So I've just been around it. To me, in this day, it's normal. Relationships between managers and dancers at strip clubs are forbidden. So at first, they had to meet secretly after work. Just catch up. Yeah, just catch up, please. I think we've been together mm. every day for 15 months. I think yeah. we maybe missed a few we're, days. We're never, ever apart. And all my friends say, oh, like, don't you want to have a break? And I say, no, I love being with Chris, you know? We have such a fun, bubbly relationship. Um, I couldn't think of anything worse than being away from him. You don't want to have a break from me ever. No, not at all. <clears throat> no? no. When Robin, Robin uh, came round, I would hide my moccasins and wear my flip-flops. <laughs> but I didn't want to think I was old. Until one day, <laughs> she said, why don't you wear them? And I said, well, I don't want you to think I'm like an old fuddy-duddy. She went, get lost, I love them, put them on, wear them. I can't maybe you hid them. I know, I hid them. <laughs> Eventually, their relationship became common knowledge at the club, but Robin still hadn't told her family. I can't remember you, whether you said, what am I going to tell my mum? <laughs> I did, yeah. So and my dad. Oh, my dad. What will I tell my dad? I know, we kept it a secret for so long, didn't we? <laughs> How did we do that? Robin's very close to her mum, dad and younger brother, so keeping things from them was difficult. Once you'd got over the shock of it, and yeah. what you're going to tell your parents and, and everyone, Yeah. and then I, I, I remember you saying at some point, you know, well, I love you now. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. The scariest bit was telling my family because I've gone from being a nanny to obviously working in a strip club and then meeting Chris and he was the manager and I don't want my family to think, oh, is it is he interested because he's a young dancer or what's his intentions? At, at first, mm. a certain pleasure you wouldn't go. Oh. And I remember that you were on edge. Oh, yeah. They were obviously worried. They were saying, well, he's older and I think it was hard <laughs> for them to take it in. <laughs> <laughs> Studies have shown that couples with more than a 10-year age difference are likely to face public disapproval. 
Today, 22-year-old Robin is meeting wedding dress designer Tatiana to find the perfect dress she'll wear when marrying her sugar daddy soap star, Chris Quinton, who's 42 years her senior. I feel really nervous going in, but I feel, I feel excited. I'm going to try the dress on for the first time. Putting it on and having a feel is going to feel more real. With Chris prepared to pull out all the stops for the wedding of their dreams, Robin is keen to find a dress with the wow factor. Hi, hi, I love it in here. So nice. I've come on my own because I don't want anyone to see it until I walk down the aisle. Despite her tender years, Robin is a millennial who knows her own mind. I definitely want backless and quite fitted and then exactly like this, actually. Yeah. So if you've got anything similar, I can try on. So... And for Robin, her big day cannot come soon enough. So come on out. Take it all in in front of the big mirror. Oh, wow. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I so love the it. The shape is great on you. No yeah. It. Oh, my God, this was strange. I'm really excited now I've got it on. You look spectacular in just the pristine white. Yeah, well. I think the white as well. Yeah. And my hair would be up, I think. Yeah. A lot of people ask me about how I feel about getting married at 22, but I just think if it feels right, then just do it. I mean, why wait? I feel I'm in love with Chris now. We've spoke about this for a long time. And I, like, I wanted to be young when I got married anyway. All my family members, they've been together a long time, so I wanted to do the same thing. Yeah, I think I'll try one more. Oh, absolutely. Let's see. Having been married once before and with two children from his previous relationships, the 62-year-old Chris is a final chance to find long-term happiness. I'm looking forward to doing it all over again getting married and starting a family. Because I've done it before, but I only had a small time. It was, it was the, the wrong time and, and the, the wrong person. Um, so hopefully I found the, the right person now. And I hope with my age, you know, I'll be able to make sure that it's all happy. Wow. That's what I want now for the rest of my days is to live in a happy home. And uh, I'd love to be able to give Robin that experience and be a good man. This is the colour I love. Yes. Yeah. Try this just for argument's sake, just so that yeah. you can get your hair out of the way. None of my friends are married. No, I think I'm going to be the first. Um, and that doesn't scare me or anything. I'm, I feel confident getting married and they're all happy for me. Right. Yeah. There you go, Thank back to you. normal clothing. I know. <laughs> It's been a successful first yeah, fitting, you. You too. which has given Robin even more reason to look forward to her big day. That was a big deal, trying on the dresses. I feel more confident now about the wedding and I feel like I can be more excited and enjoy it more. After the excitement of trying on wedding dresses, Robin's meeting her mum, Anna Marie, for lunch to discuss plans for the special day. I told her I want like um, a lace dress, like backless and then yep. sleeves. Mm, that'd be exciting. I need to get you a dress. Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure what colours yet though. Yeah. Depends what colours you're gonna. It's getting a bit real now, isn't it? Yeah. Anna Marie is 24 years younger than the man her daughter is going to marry. Does it feel weird that I'm gonna get married? Yeah. Think I'm too young. No, it's, it's lovely. You like this, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the right time. When I did tell my family, they were obviously worried. They were saying, well, he's older, is he actually with you because of he likes you or you're just a dancer and stuff like this. Like any mother, Anna Marie simply wanted what was best for her daughter. It was fine that she had a boyfriend. It was kind of when I found out his age, I was concerned, I was sh shocked. And I didn't know his intentions and, yeah. But he was, he was happiest I've ever seen you. He loves you to bits. Yeah. I could see she was besotted by him. And she loved him dearly. I didn't meet Chris for a while into the relationship, but in time I learned to accept it. While Anna Marie came to terms with Chris and Robin's relationship, for others in the family it took longer to adjust to how much older Chris was and to the fact that they'd met in a strip club. My parents were quite shocked and worried. They couldn't really accept it for a while, obviously because he was a lot older and the kind of the, the work she was doing. But as time's gone on, it's, it's kind of... He's part of the family. Telling the family, I was so scared because I was like, I've met this man, I've fallen in love with him. I know now that he's 61, but I can't 
walk away because of how am I going to walk away with someone who treats me so good and makes me happy? And that's the thing, what could I have done to stop you from doing mm. anything? Namaste. I'm thankful for you two joining me in the yoga practice today. 22-year-old Kiki has been a sugar baby for five years and can earn up to £20,000 a month from older sugar daddies who want to spend time with her. But eight months ago, she fell in love with Kathy. Now, Kiki is deciding whether to continue spending time with her men and their money while being besotted with the real love of her life. Find your own rhythm with your own life. Today, they're indulging their love of the good life with a private yoga session. I'm a mermaid! <laughs> <laughs> we like pamper ourselves together or always going for nice dinners and drinks. Stop sniffing me. No. And the indulgence doesn't stop there. From here, the luxury loving couple are heading straight to an exclusive hotel for a romantic night in the city. Oh, it's a nice day. Isn't it, babe? Hmm. Do you like that yoga? Yeah, did you? Yeah, I've not done it for ages. I know. Kiki was up front with Kathy about her sugar dating business right from their very first date, making it clear she never has any physical intimacy with her sugar daddies. I always knew what she did. She, uh, she told me when we were first speaking. Um, that's what she did. I thought it was funny. <laughs> but it was good. I would give it all up if Kathy asked me to, but she hasn't asked me to. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't mind it. It's your birthday, our anniversary, and Valentine's Day. All you of don't even know what our anniversary day. is. We've made it all. <laughs> it's on. It's when your birthday. Should we do it from when you first sent me a nude? Valentine's Day, <laughs> which we were doing anyway, so you didn't have to say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kathy's got a pretty good understanding of what I do. She doesn't feel the need to know everything. She trusts me. I don't um, cross any boundaries. I don't piss Kathy off in any way, shape or form when I'm doing anything. So as long as I'm not overstepping the line in any way, I can't see it harming our relationship. Kathy might be relaxed about Kiki's sugar dating, but it's a 24-7 job, which means Kiki has to keep her sugar daddies happy, even when she's with a girlfriend and a call from a demanding sugar daddy is never far away. Sometimes it gets a little bit stressful trying to juggle all the men that I do talk to. Babe, I was just kind of waiting around for you, to be honest. Well, you know, you were busy over the weekend, so I was like, oh, no point in coming back. And also maintaining my relationship. I literally just stood outside having dinner with my mom. Family time is the best, isn't it? Yeah, to a certain aspect, she will be stringing people along. Like, just telling lies about her life and stuff. You got your teeth done? Um, when are you paying for my teeth? <laughs> seem, to, seem to remember us talking about that. Yeah, it does shock me what she gets and um, what she does. You are very funny, aren't you? I don't mind my allowance coming in early. <laughs> but we're used to it now. It's just like... One seventy-five grand. <laughs> That's perfect. Friday morning. Two thousand. It's kind of normal now. <laughs> Saturday night. That sounds fun. Okay, babe. See you Saturday. Bye. Won't be seeing him on Saturday because I'll be away. <laughs> Keeping a sugar daddy sweet, even if she doesn't mean it, is well worth her while. Good conversation, really. Usually it is when we're talking about money. He just said that he's going to send me a couple of grand for my allowance that I have with him. But I did kind of tell a little white lie. <laughs> I did tell a little white lie and told him I would see him on Saturday, but I actually have a holiday book for Friday, so there's not a chance that that's happening. <laughs> but he'll be all right with it. I just need to uh, think of a good excuse from now till then, because I didn't really have anything on me there. That was a, you know, out of blue phone call that I wasn't expecting. But easy money still comes at a cost. I do feel a little bit awkward when like he rings and I'm with Kathy. Um, it's not because it, it's not because um, it's embarrassing or anything like that. It's just a little bit awkward when I'm flirting. It's just a little. Uh, it's, I'm not really flirting, but my voice is a little bit flirty just because I'm trying to do that little cutesy kind of character for him that he knows and loves. Um, so when I'm doing things like that, um, that's obviously how I speak to Kathy as well when we're being cute and stuff. So it's just a bit awkward. I don't really like to do it. 
I don't think Kathy cares about me getting the money off the guys as long as it's enough to get her a designer bits. <laughs> um, if I keep Kathy happy with presents, she really doesn't mind where the money's coming from or how it's coming in, as long as I'm not doing anything like cheating, anything, do you know what I mean? Experienced sugar baby Jasmine has been dating sugar daddies for money for five years. But when she first started out, she was surprised by what she found. There were more fetish men than men who just wanted to like have either a relationship or just something discreet. In fact, one of the first sugar daddies Jasmine met while at uni was into a particular type of fetish. I've known him for four years. We don't have intimacy. He is a fetish sugar daddy. He loves feet, like anything leathery, heels. He loves that. Our arrangement is I send him stories and I like send him pictures of my feet. He loves that. With this particular sugar daddy relationship, they very rarely meet face to face. He'll send Jasmine gifts and then expect to see her in them. These heels he bought me and I've worn them so much. I put them on and then I try to get like a nice angle and I would like take a photo and then I will email it to him because that's how we communicate because he has a wife. We have to keep it discreet. Despite the fact they have to keep the relationship hidden from his wife, Jasmine thinks she's providing both of them with a service. He said to me because he's not getting this kind of fantasy from his wife. She says she doesn't want to do something like that because she felt uncomfortable. And I think if you aren't getting what you want at home, you will go and find it somewhere else. So it's not for me to judge or say anything, but I understand where he's coming from. And that understanding means she knows exactly how to keep him interested and the money rolling in. Some of the stories that I read to him, they start with, imagine that I'm wearing a leather skirt with a tight leather top. And while I walk around the house, you can hear my heels while they're tapping on the floor. Something like that. <laughs> Like, he tells me he loved them. I know that. It turns him on a lot. And he does get off from it. I don't really ask much questions. I feel like, to me, I've done my job in basically pressuring him without actually having an intimacy with him. In Q, despite some initial resistance to the 41-year age gap in their relationship from her family, Chris and Robin are pressing on with the plans for their wedding. Today, they're shopping for rings. The oh, best. This one. Which one? We'll get a necklace as well, where I sit, look, with a little ring. <laughs> Come on, then. Jeweler Jerry Summers is an old friend of Chris and has already designed Robin's engagement. Hello. Hello. How are you? Since they met just over a year and a half ago, their relationship has moved quickly. Shall I pull out a few um, <laughs> yeah. things I think would be appropriate? Yeah, yes, yes, great, mate. Lovely. Do you remember when uh, when I proposed to you? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was not expecting it, was I? <laughs> just months into their romance, Chris decided to, to pop the question. Chris threw me a 21st surprise. Surprise, 21st. Um, with all my family and friends, and I walked in and everyone was there. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love this one. It was a great party, and I pretended I'm going to have to do a strip for you. And like everyone went crazy. I was thinking, where's this dance going and why is he doing this? And when he said stop the music, I thought, oh my god, he's not. Oh, this, I've got to do it now. This is perfect. Is he going to perform? Will you marry me? Oh! <laughs> it was so funny. I thought you were joking at first. <laughs> And you said yes, and everyone screamed. Yeah. Glorious diamonds. 
Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that that, I think that's perfect. I don't think you'll get any better than that. Those are decolored diamonds. When he proposed, I thought, oh my God, this has actually happened. And then it got put online and everybody went crazy with it. Chrissy's career on the small screen meant it wasn't long before their engagement was front page news. That's kind of when it all came out and everybody knew and stuff. And people who knew us, I think, just thought it was lovely, you know, and uh, ended up going on this morning. And it was, you know, in all the newspapers and stuff. But online, not everyone was so supportive and the backlash began. The article came out when we was in Mykonos and instantly my phone blew up with, like, horrible messages and on my Instagram. Even when a story went out online, I would read the comments below and the people would just be so horrible. I've seen a few comments, I was being called a, dig a gold digger, I'm with him for his money, and that kind of upset me. So it was crazy to actually have it on, but I love it. I mean, it's perfect. No, yeah, it's perfect, it looks perfect it? to me. I did want something like this. Before we came in, Robin kept saying, you know, I love diamonds and I want diamonds. And I said, well, you, <laughs> hopefully they'll be small ones. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, you know, she wanted diamonds and, uh, you know, she's got them. Yeah, and this is perfect. I can't wait to wear it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. It's so beautiful. For Robin, the only people whose opinions really mattered were her family's. People did find it harder to accept when he proposed to me. I think they thought, OK, this is more genuine now and this has been going on a while. You know, people are allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. Um, but that's all it is. It's their opinion and they're quite, you know, welcome to have that. Yeah. But it's what we feel. We'd, you know, get over this hurdle and suddenly we'd hit another one and we'd think, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And then we'd jump that one and, and then we'd hit another one. But every, every time it got better and better. Until you see us together, you'll realise, OK, we're good together, we're happy. And I find, yeah, people have accepted it more because they obviously think it's more serious now that we're planning a life together. How much, <laughs> how much is that worth? That is 125,000. Wow. I love it. I love this it. is I like a Kim it. Kardashian ring, isn't it? Oh, does it oh. all come off? <laughs> we'll have to dig the finger. With Chris back in one of Britain's most popular soaps, Robin can consider the possibility of giving up her lucrative life as a table dancer and dream of the pitter-patter of tiny feet. I was a nanny before I was working in the club and I met Chris and I always said to him, oh, I love kids and I'd love to go back into nannying and when we got together I said, I'd love kids with you one day, didn't I? And... Yeah, I, I was surprised uh, because of how young Robin is that she wasn't saying to me, OK, you know, we'll have a child when I'm 30. You know, she's talking about it now. It's like, you know, and for me, it's obviously perfect for me because, you know, there's a, a large age gap. You know, we're in love. I want to start a family. I could be with someone my age and have a child and it wouldn't work out and they leave the family. So I think with Chris, it feels right, just do it. This is the spinal um, of passion pulling you into each other's arms. Couldn't have said that better than myself. <laughs> as long as I keep myself reasonably healthy and agile, you know, I can still be running around at 80 with, with a little yeah. football and... <laughs> I think you would. I, I can. See you later, alligator. I know what crocodile. <laughs> I love you, mate. Hey, look, my ring is going to look amazing. Yeah, my, it really is going to look amazing, right? And it's never coming off my hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> In London, 25-year-old sugar baby Jasmine is about to spend some of the hard-earned cash she's made from spending time with older men. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Come on, come good. <laughs> she's having an eyebrow lift, a cosmetic procedure she hopes will keep her at the top of the game in the competitive world of sugar dating. It's going to hurt a little bit mm -hmm. when I inject the anesthetic. Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. No, don't worry. Just a small thing. Oh. You right? It's like a bee sting. Oh my god, this is so painful. You right? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think in this industry, beauty is very important because looks are what 
get you the money. Or you won't feel anything. Oh, 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 oh. The more you put into yourself, uh, beyond just having normal looking natural face, is the more you will get richer men who's willing to pay you more. The move, please. I don't think the pressure gets to me. I think mm -hmm. I always do whatever I want to do, so. You need to be really careful for the next two weeks. You can have bruising. I need to go home, have some ice, ice packs, and you can put them up here. Thanks. Mm. Show her the mirror. Check me out. <laughs> Thank you. A procedure like this could prove to be an investment for Jasmine, enabling her to maximize her earnings from sugar dating and secure her future. Now I've moved on from university and I am looking to do more things with myself. So what the money that I get now are all saved up for a business. And she's a businesswoman in a hurry. Try not to do any expressions. <laughs> I've always said to myself, by the time I hit 30, I better have whatever I wanted. So whatever I wanted to achieve, that needed to be done before 30. If you don't do something about it before being 30, then getting to be rich to me it seems just impossible. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In Manchester, Kiki and Kathy have booked themselves in for an evening of five-star luxury in an exclusive hotel and a night on the town. But those sugar daddies continue to be a distraction for Kiki. Oh, one second. Hello? Hey, you okay? Okay, so what? Um, it's up to you. She always walks off uh, on the phone. I don't know if she's working or speaking to her friends or... She just does her thing and I do mine. This person... has been texting me asking what I'm into. He wants to see me because he thinks I'm really pretty. He said, how do I tempt you? I said, hmm. He put, I'm not a time waster, looking for a me a ASAP thoughts. So I just said, I'm not wasting any time either, how much? So he said £500 a me, which is pretty standard for me. While Kathy has so far been relaxed about Kiki's sugar business... Oh, really? I wanted a kid. Kiki's still tiptoeing around her girlfriend. We've been together for, like, quite a while now, and, and obviously she knows what I did and what I've been doing, um, but just asking to go out for... like, to go on a date with someone and then me also dressing up, like when I dress up in heels and whatever and, like, um, I just feel a little bit awkward, but um, I've just got to put those feelings aside because that is my job and it does get me where I want for the moment. But as their relationship becomes more serious, can Kiki really continue with her sugar dating? I do get bored of, like, start talking to men as well. So I want to change the way I work now. I'm used to earning fast, easy money and spending fast, easy money and, like... But now I want to, like, put it towards something, invest it. I, like, I do what I do because it's easy, but... Well, fast, easy, money, mm. a lot of money. <laughs> Substantial amount of money, that's the only reason <laughs> I do it. But, yeah, I want to find something that I enjoy doing is still going to make me that money. Yeah, I don't think she'll do it for long. Um... I think there's aspects of it she can still do, but I don't think she will, no. I don't, I don't think it'll mould in with a lie. For now, it's business as usual, except that for this evening, they're going to enjoy a girls' night out. She should have been a makeup artist. There was no money in it. No. But there's a life-changing development on the horizon that means Kiki knows her days as a sugar baby are numbered. In the near future. Um, me and Kathy is going to see about maybe having a baby. So we're going to go through that process, which is obviously different for same-sex couples. So we're going to go have a little look this year, just see what it's all about, and then hopefully get 
Kathy pregnant at the beginning of next year. <laughs> I don't think I'd be comfy like when we have a family. Well, not comfy, but I'd, yeah, I just wouldn't sit there with a the baby while you're going meeting people. I wouldn't see anyone if I had a. If I had, I wouldn't see anyone. I'm gonna like ease off um, seeing people so that I don't have to see anyone when I, I actually have a child. The sugar baby life isn't the only luxurious life there is. You don't need to have a sugar daddy to live that kind of lifestyle. All done. Woo! You need to learn how to look after yourself, look after your money, invest your money so that you don't need them guys. Are you ready? Yes. After you. And that was essentially the, the plan in the long run anyway. Over half a million British university students are registered as sugar babies, just like serial sugar data Jasmine. She's been in the sugar scene for five years, but now she's determined to become a successful businesswoman as well. So over the two or three years, I've saved up just from having these sugar daddies over 300 grand. For someone who's only 25, that's a lot of money, and I could buy a house from it, but then I just saved that money for a purpose. When I started saving this money, it wasn't that I had one thing in mind. I knew I was going to open a business, but I didn't really think what business I was going to open until now. Jasmine's experience in the image-obsessed sugar industry has played a part in her chosen profession. I'm taking my nursing skills to become a dermatologist. Well, dermatology has a lot of money in it. And also, I could be my own boss, you know? Jasmine still has to qualify, so for the moment, she's continuing to juggle work, sugar dating, and dreaming big. I'm planning on opening up my business, so doing my courses, and then trying to find a place that is central, and then start my rebuilding. So I should be opening my own practice by next year, and I'm, very, I'm looking forward to that. But not only does Jasmine use her sugar daddies for easy money, she also taps them up for business advice. My mentor, he's basically helping me when I did tell him about my idea and to open up a business. He was very keen to help. So I do have money saved up for that, but he will help me financially. He even said, like, I don't need to give him any percentage of the business. He would just help me. Not many people who are in the sugar world would turn around and just make a business. And they mostly want just to buy stuff, luxury stuff for the rest of their life. I think using this industry does help. With this platform, there's a lot of men who are mentors. They can tell you the ins and outs of any business. Da -da 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 -da. In West London, Chris and Robin were hoping to tie the knot this summer, but COVID-19 has put pay to those plans. We should have champagne, but as you know, we're limited to what we can drink at the yeah. moment, yeah? <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys, I'm late. But as lockdown lifts, there's a chance to meet a few of their closest friends and introduce some of them for the first time. Mark and Kathleen, you know, you've known Robin for a long, long time. And Mark, you know, you know, th th these are my two best friends. Oh, Gary, Gary used to be on a TV show years ago called Grange Hill and uh, Justin's a, a musician, and, and Alina, they've been married for quite some time, so they, they don't know Robin very well, but they, they, kept, they were at the yeah. engagement party, but these are my best friends, and they've like been with me for a long time. Obviously, when you hear the age gap, you, you're gonna mm. have reservations about it, and you're gonna think, okay, what, what's going on there, or you know, what, what, what's the story, but seeing them together, it's, all that goes away, and they, they really are, um, they're really happy with each other and, and it really is, it's, it's meant to be. In the street at first, I feel like people used to really look and now I feel like it's just, no one looks. I feel like they just take it as they're a couple and that's that. And I think that's because we're so natural together. It's not like, I don't think people look at me as, oh, that's his sugar baby or whatever. So 
Yeah, I feel like people are more understanding now. One big happy family. Yeah. So, as you know, we sort of met a year ago, a year and a half ago. When she met you, Chris, I could see she changed. And that's the absolute truth from my heart. Uh, she grew up a lot when she met you, and she just seemed more settled, more centred, and more focused. Yeah. And I always wanted that, didn't I? Yeah. In Westbrook, I always thought, when is my life going to change? When am I going to meet someone and stop being crazy? <laughs> Seeing you guys together is, is fantastic, yeah. and, you, and you really are. You really complement each other really yeah. well, and it's and it's the real deal, and you, everyone can see that. Oh, good. It's brilliant. That's lovely, mate. Coming from you because I love you. Thank JA you. coming in to sit down with, with us. With everyone finally in place, Chris has an announcement to make. As, as you know, we were going to get married this year, and you know we had this pandemic, but we're going to do it now for next year, June the nineteenth. And, and you're all welcome. I'm so pleased to see him so happy. In fact, I've seen Chris radiate since he met Robin and I'm so looking forward to them getting married next year. So, so if we can have a, a little toast. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and hopefully there'll be a... Uh, hopefully there'll be a, there'll, there'll be a toddler on the way soon. She, for the first time in my life, she's allowed me to be me. And that is, like, really special. I feel very lucky and blessed that I've been able to, uh, to, to feel this as, a, as, a, you know, as an older man in my 60s, you know? And I, I really thought that maybe I won't meet anyone now. I'm hoping, you know, because, you know, Robin is soulmate material, definitely. Chris and Robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. I actually felt a bit emotional and I got yeah. a tear. Oh. I feel like something brought us together and we work so well together. Like, we're always so happy and, we want to be around each other all the time, which is a good sign. So yeah, I always say to him, this was meant to be. <laughs>